All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our freshwater turtle uh, exhibit here at Dolphin Marine Conservation Park. Uh, so in this pond here, we have two different species of freshwater turtles. I've got a couple of examples right here. Uh, in my hands here, we have our uh, eastern long neck turtles, or sometimes called snake neck turtles. Uh, you can see that he does have a very long neck. If he was sitting on the surface of the water poking his head out, it does look, look a lot like a baby snake, uh, which is where they get that name, the long neck snake or uh, snake neck turtle from. Um, so uh, that one there, his name is Aramis. We have three long neck uh, turtles here in the pond. Uh, their names are Athos, Porthos and Aramis. So uh, if you know the three musketeers, that's where they get their name from. You might have noticed this big fellow over here as well. He is the other species uh, and he is a Macquarie turtle, sometimes called a short neck turtle or a Murray River turtle. Uh, so both of these species can be found almost entirely within the uh, Murray-Darling system. Uh, so New South Wales, a little bit of South Australia, uh, and even up to Queensland and down to Victoria. Uh, the one difference in their distribution, uh, these short necks will live in slightly colder water. Uh, they can live in the Murray River, which gets down to four degrees sometimes in the winter. Uh, whereas the long necks, they won't get quite that far south. They do prefer warmer waters, uh, generally nothing uh, colder than 10 degrees. So I'll pop these guys uh, back in the water to join their friends. Now this big fellow here, uh, his name is Raphael. Uh, we do have four short neck turtles, or Macquarie turtles, and they are named after the Ninja Turtles. So we've got Raphael, Michelangelo, Donatello, and uh, Leonardo. <laughs> um, the way we can tell them all apart is uh, we do color code them. Um, just like the Ninja Turtles, the short necks are color coded to those ones. Uh, just a little bit of um, color on the bottom of the uh, shell there, the plaster on that one's called. Uh, the long neck turtles, uh, we use uh, yellow, red, and blue to tell the three musketeers apart. So I'm going to start feeding them soon. Um, both of these uh, guys have very similar diets, uh, although they do differ slightly. Uh, the Macquarie turtles, uh, they will eat uh, omnivorously, so they will eat dead insects off the surface. Uh, they might uh, very rarely eat some fish and crustaceans, uh, although they're not very good ambush predators. Uh, they will also eat some uh, plants as well from the fresh water, um, and even some uh, microorganisms uh, as well, uh, almost like a filter feeder sometimes. The long neck turtles though, they're a bit different. They are strictly carnivorous, uh, and with those long necks they can strike similar to a snake, um, and they are much better ambush predators. So they will eat fish more often, uh, much more live things, although the bulk of their diet does still consist mostly of dead insects that uh, fall onto the surface of the water. So these guys will live in rivers, uh, lakes and streams of course, as long as they're fresh water, um, and uh, eat anything that falls onto the surface or, or lives in there as well. Um, so what we've got here for them is uh, some little cubes of uh, mixed veggies and meat, uh, some bloodworms, some spinach, that kind of thing. Uh, so that will feed both of them. And then we have their favorite, uh, which are these mealworms here. Uh, they do prefer those insects, uh, so these guys will be straight into that. You'll see them, hopefully, uh, not too much glare on the water there, you'll be able to see straight through. Here they all come. Now, any of that food that falls to the bottom, uh, these guys are very good foragers, so you will see them digging around the logs under the rocks, shuffling the substrate around at the bottom, those little pebbles, uh, to look for anything that might have fallen um, down to the bottom before they got the chance to get it. So all of our turtles here, uh, they were born the same year. Uh, it puts them at about eight years old now uh, for each and every one. You'll see that their sizes are quite different. Um, that's because uh, reptiles in general, um, specifically with these guys, they will grow at different speeds, uh, really depending on how much they eat. So the bigger ones are the ones that are just uh, are a little bit more gutsy during feeding time. Um, and you can see it can make quite a big difference. Uh, the other reason is during winter time, uh, these guys, uh, they don't have to, but they can go through something that's similar uh, to hibernation. Uh, it's called brumation in reptiles. Um, I say that it's similar it's because they will essentially uh, shut down. They might go for a long time without eating, um, and uh, that can cause them to grow more slowly, of course, as well. Uh, this is uh, nice and warm for them here. They don't have to go through brumation at all, uh, but uh, they may still choose to. Uh, our smallest turtle, Porthos, uh, one of our long necks, he's uh, currently the only one who has gone through a brumation before out of all of these guys. They can brumate um, on the uh, land or in the water. Uh, in the water, uh, some species uh, in other parts of the world, 
uh, that live under intermittently frozen lakes uh, can even stay underwater uh, for the entirety of winter for months at a time. Um, now, the way that they can do that uh, is they have evolved a, a method of getting oxygen out of the water, uh, similar to gills in a fish, although of course they don't have gills. Uh, they can absorb some oxygen through the water through their skin a little bit. Um, opening their mouth, they do have some areas inside their mouth um, that are better at absorbing oxygen. Um, but also, uh, the best area that they've got for it is the cloaca. Um, so cloacal respiration, the cloaca, if you don't know, uh, is a, a kind of three-in-one uh, orifice for the turtles. It, it contains their uh, uh, urethra, their anus, and their reproductive organs. Um, so they've got that uh, in their rear. Uh, and they can let the water into there to absorb some oxygen. Uh, this isn't their primary method of breathing, of course. They do have lungs, that's how they will breathe coming up to the surface uh, most of the time. Um, they really only reserve that for those periods of brumation. Um, the reason it's not as effective is because just like fish um, breathing through skin like that and just like frogs as well, it does make them very, very sensitive uh, to any chemicals uh, in the water. Uh, which brings me to our, our next thing with uh, this, these species of turtles, our beautiful freshwater turtles we've got in Australia. Uh, they do have a th few threats to them. Uh, one of those is pollution. Runoff into rivers and streams uh, can be very detrimental to these uh, beautiful turtles, uh, as well as all the other uh, fish and animals that live in those uh, rivers and, and streams. Uh, their biggest threat though, uh, very similar if you watched our penguin talk uh, earlier this week, uh, is um, introduced species. Uh, big three in Australia, cats, dogs and foxes. These freshwater turtles, um, they will come up onto land uh, mostly to nest uh, and as I said before sometimes to do that uh, brumation similar to hibernation um, and it does leave them very vulnerable to uh, things like foxes, cats and dogs. So if you do have um, pets ladies and gentlemen it's not just wild uh, animals uh, that will put pressure on these species and many others just like our freshwater turtles, little blue penguins. Um, it's also domestic pets, so uh, if you do have pets, the best thing you can do uh, is keep them inside, particularly overnight, um, to go on to help protect all the wildlife around your area. Lots and lots of um, uh, reptiles, birds, mammals um, will uh, end up being hunted by them if you don't do that. Um, now, I think we've got uh, potentially a few questions from the audience. Yeah. Okay, I think we're back. Um, how do turtles sleep? Uh, that's a very good question. I'm not sure. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, we've got some others. There is uh, one from Sophia, who is five years old. Uh, she would like to know how do they put their heads back into their shell? Oh, hello, Sophia. Now, I'll try and get a turtle up to show you this. Um, but unfortunately, I won't be able to show you uh, the, what you're talking about. Um, so there's two types of turtles in terms of how they hide under their shells. Uh, you have hidden neck turtles, which are the ones you're talking about. Uh, they've basically got enough room under their shells that they can pull their legs and their head uh, back in so that they get covered up by it. Um, our turtles aren't hidden neck turtles. They're what we call side neck turtles. Um, they're not as good at tucking into their shell as the other ones. Uh, what they'll do is they'll kind of just put their neck to the side. They don't have as much room under the shell and they'll do their best to tuck themselves in, uh, but they do still stick out a little bit. Um, side neck turtles are the much more primitive. Um, they've been around for much longer. Uh, hidden neck turtles are the more recently evolved um, type of, of uh, shell hiding turtles. Uh, are turtles mammals or reptiles? Uh, turtles are reptiles. <laughs> and we have um, Elijah who is six years old. He would like to know what makes them live um, a long life. Uh, hello Elijah. So um, there's a, a healthy diet uh, taking good care of uh, any animal uh, in human care will help them go on to live a long life. Um, now these guys, their life expectancy might not be what you think it is. Um, there are some species of tortoises and turtles that can live um, over a hundred years old. Um, generally for these guys though, uh, their upper life expectancy will be around uh, 25 for the uh, short neck turtles, around 35 for the long neck turtles. Ooh, okay. Uh, how many eggs do they lay? So uh, for both of these species, um, they will lay about 10 to 15 eggs at a time um, and they'll come up onto land to do that and they'll dig it about 20 centimetres deep in the ground, usually preferring uh, uh, sandy kind of mud uh, around the riverbanks. Uh, now depending on the area that they are, they will lay it either closer or further from the stream 
um, depending on how much predators. Uh, obviously, further away from the stream if there are less predators because they can travel a bit further, uh, and that helps prevent the nest from getting flooded. Uh, if there are predators, they won't go out of the water for as long, so they'll load them closer to the shore or to the river. Um, the short-necked turtles, they will start mating uh, around this time of year, late, late autumn. Uh, and they will lay their eggs and they, they start building their nests in spring uh, to hatch their young in summer, early summer. Uh, the long-necked turtles are very similar. Um, they will lay and hatch their eggs at the same time, but they will, uh, won't start mating until uh, very early spring, late winter. Uh... Lily wants to know, do they have different patterns on their shelves? Uh, very slightly different um, depending on the species, uh, although these guys are two of the most similar turtles you can really kind of come across. Uh, but on turtles in general, freshwater turtles in general, you can get all different kinds of patterns and colours. You can get really bright yellows, um, even oranges sometimes on them. Uh, now, uh, if we uh, go back to before when somebody asked about uh, how they hide in their shell or how they get out of their shell when they hide, uh, really you can see that there is a little bit of room underneath his shell here. Uh, and like I said before, our turtles, they're not hidden necks, so he won't go fully back into his shell like some species will. Uh, he's got a very long neck, so that would be hard anyway. Uh, but what he will do, if he was a bit worried or scared, he's, he's quite used to me holding him, so he's not too worried right now. Uh, but what he would do is he would fold his neck down um, under these little gaps here. See, my finger's about the same size as his neck, and you can see I can kind of fit it under there fairly easily, so he'll just fold it over into there if he needs to hide. Uh, okay, we've got... What is the survival rate for them out in the wild? Uh, so there's really not very much known about either of these species in terms of how um, endangered or not endangered their survival rates um, right now. We do know that they're vulnerable to uh, those things that I mentioned before, um, uh, those introduced species, uh, to things like uh, pesticides runoff, uh, chemical pollution, uh, pollution in general, uh, and drought. Uh, but there's, there's no official record on if they're endangered or not. Uh, the only species uh, that, uh, that is, is actually a subspecies of our short necks here. Um, you might have heard of them if you're from this area, is the Bellingen River turtles. Um, they are uh, an endangered subspecies of um, these turtles that we have here. Alright, let's see if there's any more. Uh, oh, I don't know if this is... Is there a way to identify them um, uh, and which turtle? Uh, so for our turtles there is ways to identify them. Um, so uh, like I was saying earlier, if you missed it, we do put a little bit of colour um, on their plastron, which is basically their belly, uh, the bottom side of their shell. Um, the short necks are, are named and coloured after the ninja turtles, so Raphael will be red, Donatello purple, Leonardo blue, and uh, Michelangelo orange. Uh, the three musketeers are long necks, uh, Athos, Porthos, and Aramis. Uh, Athos will be uh, blue, Porthos red, and Aramis yellow. Um, I don't think there's any uh, colour code into the original three musketeers, those are just the colours that we chose. <laughs> Uh, and do you know how fast they can swim in the water? Oh, I don't know exactly, um, but they can um, do quite fast little burst speeds if they get scared um, to dive down into the water to escape predators um, and to hide under logs and rocks. Uh, but I can't give you an exact number, sorry. <laughs> Alright guys, so uh, keep in touch with us uh, tomorrow, uh, have a look at our Facebook page, uh, we will be uh, uh, revealing next week's schedule, we've still got uh, lots of beautiful animals to show you, uh, lots of beautiful animals to tell you about and talk about, um, so keep in touch with us, thank you all so much for joining us here today uh, and for the questions we got on our beautiful freshwater turtles.